All right, in today's video, what I'm gonna show you guys how to do is download AutoBleam, install it to your USB drive, how to load it up, and what the menu options are and what's different about Bleem Sync versus AutoBleam. I'm Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right guys, so the first thing that we need to do is open up our web browser and we need to navigate to the GitHub page for the AutoBleam release. Um, the page actually, if you were to just go to Google and type in AutoBleam, you, it'll take you to this page here uh, as the first result. And what you need to do is just click on the releases button. As always, I'll leave the, uh, the links to everything that I do in the description down below. So once you click on the, um, the releases button, we've got a lot of different options here. So we've got something called AutoBleam 0.5.1 clean zip, uh, full dot zip. You've got the NTSCJ, NTSCU, and then PAL E. These are all different options depending on what you're trying to do. If you go with the full zip, what that's going to do is it's going to include all the databases for Japanese games, UK games, um, and US released games. Uh, but for me, I'm going to be just dealing with US releases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just download the ntscu.zip file. I'm going to save that right to my desktop. And I'm going to let that download. Perfect. So now that that's done, I'm just going to go ahead and minimize my uh, web browser. And I've got it right over here. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to extract it to its own folder on the desktop. Beautiful. So now I've got it right here and I can actually just get rid of the zip file because we no longer need it. I'm going to open it up just to take a look at the contents in here. So we've got a payload folder. We've got an auto bleam folder. We've got a games folder and we've got a themes folder. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to open up our USB drive as well. And we need to format that USB drive. So let me just kick it over here. We're going to scroll down and I've got it right here, SanDisk 32 gig. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to format it. Uh, just as with Bleem Sync, you have to make sure that you label it as Sony in all caps. And we need to make sure that it is formatted to FAT32. Okay, perfect. Now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and we're going to open up our USB drive. Next thing that we need to do, just like with Bleem Sync, we just need to copy everything over and let that transfer over to our USB drive. Perfect, so now that that's done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close the Bleem Sync folder because we don't need that. And now we're just gonna work within our USB drive. So we've got a few different folders here. If we open up the Auto Bleem folder and we go to, I believe it's bin and then DB, you can see in here we've got the cover art for our US version uh, video games. If we had downloaded the full version, we would also have two additional files here, one for UK based games, one for Japanese games. But again, like I said, I only downloaded the US version, which is all that's applicable to what I'm going to be doing. So we're going to scroll on back and we're gonna open up our games folder. Inside here, it's completely empty. What we need to do is we need to transfer our games in here. We can either transfer bin and Q files or we can do PBP files, but the important thing to know about PBP files is they cannot be encrypted. So if you are comfortable converting your own uh, bin Q files into PBP files, then you can do that. And I think there's a, a converter for PSX to PSP. Um, if you're comfortable doing that, feel free to do it. Uh, I've already pre-downloaded a bunch of games and what I'm going to do is I am going to throw on a bunch of PBP games uh, into this drive. So let me just open up my USB drive with all of my games. Perfect, so I'm gonna transfer in just a few games. And while those games are transferring, I'm just gonna fast forward. Okay, so I've transferred in five games. I'm gonna go ahead and close my folder with all my games in it, and I'm gonna leave this one open for a second. We're gonna right click and we're gonna refresh. And what we need to do is we need to make sure each of these games is in its own folder with the name matching the, the name file of the PBP. So you can do this a couple of ways. You can just right click, go to new, create a new folder, um, and then type in whatever you want. You can copy the name of 007, the world is not enough, and then paste that here, and then just transfer the file in there. Um, but that can be tedious if you have a lot of games. 
So there's a really good application called File to Folder GUI, which you can download, and I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. And what you can do is if you open up the application, you can actually choose the directory in which you want to um, to make these changes to, and it's gonna be on our Sony and inside of our games folder. So if we hit okay, what that's going to do is it's going to look inside of this specific folder and it's going to take every single file in there and it's gonna put it within its own folder. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is hit move. And now as you can see, all of the games are now within their own folder and the names have just been copied from what the actual PBP file was. So if you double click on 007, the world is not enough, you can see that the file is now inside of a folder. So that actually makes things substantially quicker and you can do literally 100 games and it takes, you know, two or three seconds to do. So it'll save you a lot of time. So again, I'll leave the link to that in the description down below. Uh, feel free to use that if you guys need it. So now all that's left for us to do is to disconnect our USB drive, pop it into our PlayStation Classic, exactly like BleemSync. You're gonna put it into the secondary controller port. Uh, you're gonna keep the power off and unplugged. Once the USB drive is popped in, you're gonna power on your PlayStation Classic, and I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my PS Classic now. Okay guys, so here we are on uh, the PlayStation Classic now. As soon as you turn on the PlayStation Classic with that new USB drive plugged in, you'll automatically be prompted to uh, press X on your PlayStation Classic controller. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna scan all of the games that we've uh, loaded onto the PlayStation Classic's USB drive. So that way it can update its database and it'll display all those games for us. The neat thing about this is if you guys were to put five games on right now and then two or three days later you added another 10 or 15 games as soon as you plug it in it will recognize that there are more games than were previously installed it'll take you right back to the screen and it just asks you to rescan those games so what we need to do is we need to press x and you can see it's scanning and now it's currently updating the regional so now that that's all finished, uh, it'll take us to our main menu on our AutoBleam. So if you press start, it'll take you into AutoBleam, which is going to have all the games that we've preloaded. If there was an error with scanning, you can press X to rescan or to scan. If you press the circle button, that will take you back to the original firmware on your PlayStation Classic. So if you want to play the original 20 games without any hack at all, press the circle button, it'll bypass auto bleam, it'll boot up right into your uh, PlayStation Classic original firmware. If you press square, that will take you into RetroArch, and from my understanding, RetroArch is not pre-installed, but it is available. So if you wanted RetroArch, you would create a folder on the root of your USB drive called RetroArch, and you would load it into there. If you press the triangle button, it's just gonna give you the information about uh, the current build that you have. So on here it says AutoBleam 0.5.1 and it's gonna give you information on who the developer is and if you need support, there's a Discord link there as well. And um, it just gives you some information. They do say that it works as is. We take no responsibility for any issues or damage. And of course that's the case with any hack. When you are hacking your console, you are running the risk of possibly breaking your system. Um, that risk falls into your hands because you're the one who's doing it, but most of the time we wouldn't be uh, putting in the effort to make these videos unless we felt it was safe for the for the public to use. And I don't think the developer would release anything that he didn't feel was safe either. So keep that in mind. If we're going to go back again, you've got options here, um, which is the select button. So if you press that, you've got a few different things here. You can actually go ahead and change the language. So that's a nice feature that's pre-built into it. Um, You've got AutoBleam themes, so there's a few that are pre-installed. There's the default theme. There is the, um, this is called AeroBleam Remix. Um, this is the one that was on there as well. Um, and it looks like there are maybe four or five different ones. Yeah, there's a PlayStation 1 theme. There's a bunch of different themes that are pre-built. And of course, you can always look online, um, check out Reddit forums, and see if there's any other themes that you like. But um, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the, um, I think the original one that they had on there, this one, Arrow Bleams PS, uh, on there. So the menu theme as well, there's a bunch of different themes that you can select. Um, I'm gonna just leave the stock theme. Uh, quick Boot, so what that would do is if you were to turn Quick Boot on, instead of taking you to this uh, this boot menu of type, it'll just load right into Auto Bleam. I'm gonna leave that off because I like having access to all of my options. Uh, background music, as you guys can hear if I be quiet for a second,
So there's background music in there. Uh, I believe that's customizable. You should be able to locate that file inside of your USB root uh, and you can replace it with whatever you want. But some people don't like the background music, me being one of them. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So you just press the right arrow key or the right directional pad on your controller and you can switch between on and off. Uh, GFX filter, that's again something that you can choose to turn on or off. It's um, It affects the, the visuals of the menu and of the games. Uh, for now I'm going to leave it off because I haven't actually played around with it. Uh, my options here are to show RetroArch or not to show RetroArch. Currently I do not have RetroArch installed on my USB uh, root, so I can turn that off because I'm not going to be able to access RetroArch anyways, but if you did have RetroArch installed, you can leave that on and you can access it that way. And then of course you've got your advanced options. Um, advanced options is your L1 button. If you press and hold that, you've got access to your game manager and your memory cards. I believe within the game manager, you can actually edit the name of games. So for example, if you had Gran Turismo 2 on here, as you guys know, there's a simulator game, or sorry, there's a simulator disc, and then there's also the arcade disc. And what would typically be recommended is that you would load each disc as its own folder so that way it'll show up as its own game um, simply because you can't access one disc from the other disc within the game so this would be something that you could do you would press your circle button to manage it and then you could choose whatever game it is you wanted let's say we had Gran Turismo 2 on here you would click on it and then you could edit the uh, the name in which it displays on auto bleam so that's uh, that's a pretty cool option there as well. I do like that that's all doable right from within the system. But uh, now that I've kind of gone through the main menu of the uh, the boot menu here, what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, load up AutoBleam. So as you can see, you still get your um, your warning. Uh, and what's cool is the um, the artwork that they've got in here is the 3D artwork, which is pretty neat. The only thing that you're going to notice, if you look at any of the games in the background, you'll notice that they've got um, because because the because the uh, the artwork here isn't a, an exact square. You'll notice that. For example, if you look on the right side of the page where Crash Bandicoot is, it has almost like an outline of what the full box art image could fill up is, but as soon as you switch it over to um, the game itself, clearly when you're looking directly at the game, it doesn't look that way. Um, but that's maybe something that they may work on in future builds to kind of get rid of that shadowing effect. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So all you would need to do then at this point is you could select the game that you want to play. And I'm just going to go ahead and load up Castlevania to show you guys how that works. So you press X on that. The game loads up. And it uh, it plays plays exactly like the uh, Bleem Sync emulator would. It's it's quite nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new file here, and we're just going to jump into the game for just a few seconds here to see how this plays. Monster, you don't belong in this world. It was not okay, so we can see that there's still some issues here, uh, especially with the text that's being displayed on screen. Some of the letters are not showing up properly, but in terms of the actual game itself, it seems to be playing okay. Um, the game's fairly responsive, and this is this is the same thing that you run into with the uh, with the Bleem Sync hack and with the PlayStation Classic uh, in general. So the the emulator is not the best emulator on the market, uh, and it certainly has lots of room to improve. But uh, this this hack is actually pretty pretty cool. Now, in order to exit my game, I can either I believe I can press the reset button, or you can press the select triangle button to access the quick menu. I am going to try to press the reset button to see if it takes me back out. Okay, so the buttons on the actual PlayStation Classic do work properly, so if you press the reset button, it will back out of the game, and it will create a, um, 
a resume point or a save state, um, just like it would on the original PlayStation Classic, as well as in the Bleem Sync hack. So this is uh, this is a pretty cool hack. Uh, I do like it. It's been around for as long as Bleem Sync has. Now, the developer for this, he's just a single guy working on it. He doesn't have a huge team. Um, he does have a Discord, and he has a lot of people that are kind of from the community working with him to try to make it better. Uh, but it's certainly uh, it's certainly a, a cool alternative hack for your PlayStation Classic. Whether it's better than Bleem Sync, that's still to be said. Uh, I, I definitely like Bleem Sync and the amount of support that goes into it. And Auto Bleem here is is pretty cool. Now I haven't really messed around with their retro arc builds um, to see how that runs. But again, that is something that I plan to do and uh, to fuss around with. And if I've got some cool content, what I'll do is I'll make sure I make a video about it and show you guys how to do it. But uh, I've had a lot of requests to get this specific hack installed on the PlayStation Classic uh, with a tutorial. So here it is for you. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Uh, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.